The payments industry is undergoing dramatic change with banking as a service, cloud adoption and the introduction of CBDCs, all forging a new future in the space. Well, to look at how the future may unfold and what banks need to do to meet the coming changes and how technologies such as the cloud can support these changes. We're joined today by Barry Rodriguez, uh, EVP for payments at Fenastra, and Sylvie boucheron sonnier I hope that was close enough, Sylvie, <laughs> Chief Revenue <laughs> Officer for payments also from Fenastra. OK, look, it's, it's very good to see all of you. But I mean, look, I mean, Barry, let me start first with you. One of the big discussions or topics, in fact, on discussion here at Cybos will be contextual finance and banking as a service. So from your perspective, how definitive do you think that BAS will be in shaping the future of finance? And also, what opportunities do you see for other payment systems as well? Yes, thank you. Thanks for having us. Um, look, I think uh, the way people and businesses consume financial services is fundamentally changing. It's not lost on banks. Historically, you used to manufacture your own products and sell them to your customers. Now what's happening is consumers and corporates will consume financial services on their terms wherever they want to. So as an example, if I'm online on a merchant's website buying something um, and I want to get financing to buy that object, I want to be approved for the loan right there and then. I don't have to go back to my bank or get a credit card, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's not lost on banks, and this is a big space, right? In the uh, banking as a service era, uh, things are moving very fast. When we look at 2025, we expect, for example, that 26% uh, of all SME lending will be done in the embedded finance space, which represents about a market of about $124 billion. So financial institutions are trying to find out how to get there. It's no, surprising, no surprise to us that 85% of executives we speak to in banks and financial institutions want to participate in that, in that space and participate in that revenue stream. <clears throat> what we at Finastra are doing is we are engaging in a variety of partnerships. Uh, we've just signed a deal with Visa Direct on cross-border payments. We've done a deal with HSBC on Treasury as a service. We've done a, a deal with Microsoft 365 Dynamics to actually embed lending in their platform. So we're participating in this as it evolves, and, and it's a fast-moving space, so it's very, very exciting. Sylvie, from speaking to your clients and financial institutions around the globe, what are the key priorities and themes that you guys have been hearing, and what do you expect to be the key topics under discussion this week at Cybos? So we have the chance as Finastra is uh, acting all around the globe to hear from customers from all around the world. Uh, there are three key themes that we keep hearing about around agility, profitability and sustainability. Uh, agility, everything is around the cloud those days. There are lots of discussions about how do you rely on decentralized assets or asset light mm. type of uh, ownership. Uh, the cloud uh, is really you know, at the center of a lot of the discussions we've had, not only from small banks, but also the large banks. You know, in the past, cloud was more for, you know, more agility or smaller uh, financial institutions. Today, this is a topic for every single bank we speak to. Uh, as far as Finastra is concerned, this is why we launched our Fusion Payments to Go offering, which is a South Payments Hub, uh, the latest generation of Payments Hub uh, based in the cloud. The second topic is around profitability. You know, we are in a highly regulated environment. And one of the questions our customers are asking is, you know, how can I make money? And how can I leverage every single investment which I'm making? The other day I was speaking to a customer in North America and they were telling me for every single dollar that we invest, we want to generate two dollars of revenue. So I'm coping with a new regulation. I'm coping with ISO 2022, uh, you know, uh, regulation. How do I make money from that? So the way we handle that, the way we discuss it is, you know, you can make money through an ecosystem of partners. And this mm. is what our Fusion Fabric.cloud offering is about, which is how do you leverage every time you invest a dollar, how do you leverage our platform to monetize? So you can design, develop and monetize your own applications or consume innovation from others. And the third topic is around sustainability. ESG is at the center of every single bank discussion those days. Simon Paris, our CEO, will have a specific speaking slot on Thursday at 1 p.m. on the plenary session about sustainability and ESG, which is also at the core of what Finastra is doing right now. Mm. I mean, once again, Barry, it, it does show just how much is actually happening 
in this space. And it's fascinating as well that once upon a time, ESG, it was kind of hovering there on the edges, but it's now mm -hmm. gone into the centre. Also joined, of course, by the central bank digital currencies and mm -hmm. CBDCs. I mean, what are the use cases which are driving digital money projects? And how does Finastra actually see that CBDC story actually playing out? Because there's a lot of controversy surrounding it. And you tend to find that while some people aren't necessarily excited by the concept of the currency, they cannot get enough of the technology and its <coughs> adaptability. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think all of these things have moved from ideation stage to reality. If you think, uh, look at CBDCs, 102 governments around the world are involved in some CBD project or another. Um, 19 out of the 20 uh, largest e uh, economies in the world are driving a CBDC agenda. 10 countries have actually launched a CBDC. Mm. So it's happening, it's real. It actually brings specific benefits and use cases, for example, cross-border trade can be done and payments can be done at a significantly cheaper and more enhanced uh, cost structure than the more traditional uh, rails that were used. I think for us at Finastra, we're spending a lot of time um, being involved in this. We're just participating right now, actually, in the Digital FMI Consortium, which is effectively a de-sterling initiative uh, where we are working with a bunch of um, partners to look at de-sterling and possible use cases that spin off it that can enhance, you know, benefits to customers and also to providers. And so that's exciting for us being involved in that initiative. I mean, I view our, our position at Finastra to basically be the provider of financial services across the spectrum. Regardless of which uh, ecosystem evolves, we want to be there for our, our banks and our, and our partners to be able to provide that. So whether it's a CBDT or the next generation of that, right? mm. we want to be able to be able to be there. And we're working on that as we move forward. Let's not go into what the next generation of the CBDC <laughs> is going to look like. That, that's, that's way out in the future. Yes, <laughs> that's right. That's right. We'll stick with CBDC. Uh, exactly what we know now. <laughs> Sylvie, the, uh, the volume of real-time payments uh, continued to grow globally and the footprint, of course, of real-time payment schemes continued to proliferate as well. The growth of being uh, driven uh, by customer demand uh, for more modern and frictionless fast payments. What can financial institutions do to meet these needs? So first of all, there are different you know, aspects to real-time payments. Real-time payments really started from the consumer uh, side, you know, with retail payments and consumer payments. Uh, and especially, you know, for instance, with faster payments in the UK, like I think 14 years ago or 15 years ago, so a while ago, there were... Uh, so the levels of maturity uh, in the world are very different depending on which region you look at. Uh, also now, and, and, and you know, we see this uh, transition from retail payments to corporate payments. Now we see corporates also uh, asking for real-time payments, uh, notably to improve the liquidity management and, uh, and make sure they have efficiencies in the way they process their own payments with corporates. Um, coming back to what I said earlier, you know, really one of the challenges with real-time payments is the short-term profitability or how do you make money, you know? The business case is not that obvious and let's, you know, sometimes we address the elephant in the room like, hey, how do I make money with uh, real-time payments? And really this is one of the key questions that we ask and our customers are asking for. And this is where in that context, you know, I come back to my fusionfabric.cloud concept, which is, okay, how do you uh, embed value-added services mm. easily as you implement a real-time payment scheme or a real-time payment solution, and how do you monetize every value-added service that you put on top of your real-time payment? It can be fraud uh, management solutions. It can be, uh, you know, a lot of value-added services coming from the ecosystem, not coming from your own environment, but coming from uh, uh, fintech and, and people we work with or other banks. Uh, and this is also what at Finastra we are, uh, we are facilitating with, uh, with our solutions. Well, guys, good luck with uh, taking on these challenges uh, in the week ahead. And of course, in the years ahead as well, I hope you enjoy your time here at Cybos 2022 and you find plenty of solutions <laughs> along the way. Uh, that's Barry Rodriguez, EVP for Payments, and Sylvie boucheron Seigneur, Chief Revenue Officer for Payments, both at Finastra. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.